Digital projectors, I feel like, are kind of having a moment right now. And a lot of that I feel like comes down to the fact that, well, one, they're finally like starting to get to some, at least, TV's quality, but with the ability to have much larger screens, in some cases they're even portable, and their pricing has come down a lot over the last few years. But there are a lot of different types of projectors and a lot of different technologies involved in projectors that I think you need to know about before you go off and buy one. So in this Decoder episode, my explainer series here on the channel, let's talk about how digital projectors work, as well as some of the pros and cons to the different technologies involved. Full disclosure, I was sent these two laser projectors. We'll get into more of what that means a bit later. But they are the Capsule 3 Laser and the Cosmos Laser 4K, both made by Nebula, a subsidiary of Anchor, as you've probably heard of because they're the world's most popular mobile charging brand, to help me make this video. And honestly, they're both kind of cool. We'll use them throughout this video to explain a few things and we'll talk about them more a bit later. But first, how do projectors work in the first place? Now, in a nutshell, every digital projector works in a similar way. By taking a digital signal, i.e. the Capsule 3 here can use Bluetooth or Chromecast to get content from your laptop or phone, or even use Android TV 11, which is installed on the projector itself. And you can install apps from that to play content directly over a Wi-Fi connection. And then it converts that signal into red, green, and blue colored images that is transmitted to a display technology and a light source shines light at the display tech through a series of special mirrors and lenses to get three different colored images which are then finally combined back together to become a full colored image and projected onto a screen or wall. Now the two big things that change between digital projectors and the things that you really need to be looking for when you're trying to choose the best digital projector is the light source and the display technology. So first let's start with the display technology. It's either going to be LCD, LCOS, or DLP, with DLP for the most part being the most popular at the moment. LCD, or liquid crystal displays, take small transparent LCD screens, generally one for green, one for red, and one for blue, the three primary colors that we use to make up all the colors in our digital images. Then our light source would generally beam white light, sometimes it isn't white, but we'll get to that in a bit, onto a series of dichroic mirrors that only reflect red, green, or blue light, and let the other colors in the spectrum pass through and get discarded. This then splits the light into those three colors, and a series of mirrors would reflect those specific colored lights to an LCD for that corresponding color, which would have a mask for that portion of the image that needed to have that color in it to allow the part of the image with those colors to shine through to the other side. And then all three of these colored images are combined in a prism to give us a full color image and projected through a lens to be seen on your wall or screen. Now the pros of using LCD display technology in a projector is that it has, well, a pretty decent image, good color reproduction, and the big one is it's generally cheaper. And after that, we have DLP, or Digital Light Processing. It's actually a brand name owned by Texas Instruments for DMD, or Digital Micro Mirror Devices. Things like Kleenex and tissues. Now, this is a panel comprised of thousands of microscopic mirrors that each represent a pixel on the screen. Our light source is then usually split again into RGB, but instead of being split by dichroic mirrors, it's usually split with a rotating wheel. That is portions that let through red in one portion, green in another, and blue. And it spins super fast so that we have these red, green, and blue versions of the image being sent in rapid succession one after the other. Now these versions of the image then hit the DLP, which can move these tiny mirrors slightly to either have the light shine out of the projector or move another direction to not shine out, effectively turning those pixels on and off. And it can do this for each red, green, and blue image thousands of times a second, so that when we see it projected out the other side, our eyes actually combine the image into a full colored image. Also, the resolution of this final image is dependent on how many mirrors that DLP has. So in the case of the Cosmos Laser 4K, we have a 4K image because the DLP has 3840 by 2160 mirrors on it, and the Capsule 3 has full 1080p because its DLP has 1920 by 1080 mirrors. And some of the pros of using DLP DLP display technology in a projector are one, the pixels are generally less visible. You can see here on the Capsule 3, that even at the full 120 inches that this little projector can hit, it's pretty clear and you can't see the pixels like you sometimes can with other projectors. A lot of times this also translates to higher contrast. It also means that the projector itself is lighter, so it's more portable. We also generally have a brighter image and there are fewer parts, so it's much easier to maintain and repair. And lastly, for the display tech that we usually see used in digital projectors, we have LCOS, or Liquid Crystal on Silicon. And this is sort of a combination between the technologies of LCD and DLP. So 
we have our light source that again is split into red, green, and blue, usually with dichroic mirrors again, and then bounced to a reflective surface like DLP. But in this case, it's not a DLP device with moving mirrors. Instead, it's three different chips, one for each of our primary colors again, that has a reflective layer of silicon and then a layer of liquid crystals on top of that. The liquid crystal layer is then controlled to move the crystals to either let light in or block it again, just like how the LCD display tech works. But then any of the light that is let through hits the silicon layer and is reflected back and into a mirror, giving us our red, green, and blue versions of our image that are again combined before being projected. So what are the benefits to LCOS? Well, there's generally better contrast, better color, and reduced lag. But it is a lot more expensive to make and also has a lot more components and generally tends to make the projectors a lot bigger and heavier. Now you'll generally see one of those display techs listed on your projectors that you're looking at. But the other thing you need to take a look at because it does make a difference is the light source. So generally this is a bulb, LED, or a laser. And all of the display technologies that I just mentioned can be used with any of those different light sources with just some minor adjustments with how it works depending on the use case. So firstly for light sources, sometimes we have just a very bright bulb, which would work in all three of these display technologies basically as I've already explained them. These aren't the brightest light source though. They don't last the longest either and they give off a decent amount of heat, but they're the cheapest. And then moving up from there, we have LED, which would work similarly to a bulb on all of these display technologies. But in most cases, LED projectors don't have white light that is split with those dichroic mirrors. And instead, they have separate three different LEDs for red, green, and blue sources of light. These would then be used in an LCD projector by pointing each of these three LEDs at their own LCDs to give us three colored images that again are combined before being projected out. And the same goes for LCOS projectors with LEDs inside. And for the DLP LED projectors, they generally just aim all of the LEDs at the DLP mirror system and it works basically the same as it did with a bulb. And lastly, we have laser projectors. Now these tend to be the most advanced technology for light sources in projectors. And while that means that they cost more, than the others, they are more energy efficient and they tend to be brighter with better image quality and color. Now the way that they are set up inside projectors is similar to LEDs and it can be used with one laser that is split into red, green, and blue via mirrors and pointed at the LCD displays as usual or three different colored lasers that can each be aimed at each LCD. Anchor Nebula are actually the first brand to put laser technology into a portable projector and it's a DLP laser projector. So. It generally works the same way as the bulb would where they have a spinning wheel to separate the red, green, and blue light that then quickly bounces off the changing DLP set of mirrors and is projected out. But some projectors can also have three lasers, one of each color, red, green, and blue again, aimed at the DLP, similar to how some LED DLP projectors can be set up. And same goes for how they can be used in LCOS projectors with three different lasers of each color, each aimed at a different LCOS chip of that color, again, like how an LED version would work. Now, as mentioned, an example of a laser DLP projector, which again is sort of that sweet spot right now for brightness, cost, and even portability, is the Capsule 3 here. The DLP part means it's super portable, so you can easily bring it with you to go camping or even just easily move it to your backyard from inside. And the fact that it uses lasers means that it is brighter. 300 NZ lumens actually for this model. So 1.8 times brighter than an LED system with the same wattage. And we even have better color than an LED DLP system with the same wattage. Plus we even use less power. And so it has longer battery life. The Capsule 3 can actually run for up to two and a half hours on battery if you don't wanna just leave it plugged in, which you can also do, and even has power delivery fast charging support to recharge it to full in three hours off of any power delivery quick charge 2.0 source, including even battery packs. Now, besides that, there are some other smaller features that are important to look for when looking at a projector, surely for the overall experience of using that projector, like auto keystone correction and autofocus. For example, on this Capsule 3, which has both of those things, you just point it at the screen or wall and it'll automatically adjust the image to be in focus and angled on the wall so that it's straight. It's just convenient, frankly. But there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you thought of the video in the comments below. Also, shout out to Anchor Nebula for helping me make this video. They actually also gave me some links to put in the description below with some pretty significant discounts on both of these projectors, including this Transformers one that I was told uh, there's only 4,000 of. So if you're curious about either of the projectors, check them out at the link below. And now, while I still have this giant screen set up, I'm gonna make some popcorn and watch a new episode of Mandalorian, probably. Night.